This video is all about the TL071 chip and about the good properties of that chip when you want to make an oscillator or whatever. I published this say a few days ago and also told that I could get two very good frequencies with a perfect uh, square wave. That's also important, it has everything to do with the good properties of this uh, op-amp. Because it has a field effect transistor input. I did more experiments now and here is the circuit on the breadboard. You see here a potentiometer, a capacitor that's responsible for the frequencies but also other capacitors that I tested are uh, responsible for the frequency has everything to do with an oscillator circuit and here are more or less the results of the measurements Uh, perhaps at first it's interesting to show that uh, when you have here a capacitor that's frequency dependent, of course the whole circuit is frequency dependent, everything here plays a role in the output frequency, be it a square wave or a kind of square wave. That's the reason why I have uh, mounted here a switch and a parallel resistor and also here. But anyway, back to where it's all about. The 220k potentiometer is now in series with a capacitor. And that capacitor can have all kinds of values. I tested 47 picofarad, 511 picofarad, 15 nanofarad, 100 nanofarad. And the uh, strange thing that has uh, that happens here is that uh, on a certain position of that potentiometer we see uh, a kind of linear um, waveform out, linear uh, frequency out, but when the potentiometer is turned over its maximum we see a kind of drop, there is no oscillation visible here. And after that we see again oscillation but in a very high frequency range. I think it has everything to do with the phase, phase issues. Uh, I cannot get into detail, but anyway, perhaps it's interesting to show what happens here. The uh, signal tracer, so we can listen to the frequency that is generated. And here the circuit. And here that potentiometer that is in series with the capacitor. I've now taken the uh, 100 nanofarad capacitor. But of course I did more experiments with other frequencies, with other uh, capacitors, etc. Anyway, and the circuit on the breadboard. You can hear a frequency now, at the moment. And that's generated at the moment by this capacitor, 100 nanofarad. Let's look on the scope what happens when we turn that potentiometer of a 220 K. That's here. Uh, 
and now it stops. And that's strange. There is no oscillation here. Uh, and let's go back somewhat. Two point nine kilohertz. This is the waveform. But and here, here there is a certain dead point. I'm sure that has to do with the phase of the signal that's back coupled, or in another way, the phase is not proper. And here we. Again, when I turn that potentiometer again, we see an oscillation, but now on a very high frequency band. 199 kilohertz. And this is the waveform. Doesn't look like a sine wave, but anyway, interesting to show that when you Turn that potentiometer somewhat back. It gets a sine wave. And of course we know with a sine wave oscillator uh, the amplification must always, always be one. So that makes this circuit very critical. So when I go with my hand to it, you see that sine wave. But when I Turn that potentiometer slightly back. You get a somewhat distorted sine wave here, but it is more stable. So now we don't have hand effect or a very slight hand effect. And you can meet this effect also with other capacitors, not 100 nanofarad. But, for instance, 47 picofarad, or say 500 picofarad. And here are all the experimental measurements. And you can see that on a certain frequency, uh, with that potentiometer in series with that capacitor, that's here, here and here, in series with a capacitor, you can, sorry, you can get to sine waves, but also to other kinds of waves that look more or less to a perfect square wave, but also to a square wave that is uh, has another waveform. I have to say, in all these circuits here, though these switches here were open this one and that one so that you only had here that 100k put, uh, sorry resistor and here that 100k resistor back but because this is an oscillating circuit when you change the value of such a resistor or of the capacitor or whatever uh, perhaps not the power supply I found that the this chip, the TL071, uh, was not very sensitive to changes uh, in the frequency related to the power supply. But anyway, um, when you change this resistor here to a lower value, the frequency will go up. And here I found when you change that 100k resistor to a lower value, 3k3, the frequency went down very, very substantially, and also with quite a high, uh, sorry, low-value capacitor, say 10 nanofarad or 47 nanofarad, you could get to very low um, frequencies, square wave frequencies, and that's very good of this chip. Has everything to do, in my opinion with the field effect transistor input. Anyway, the more or less sine wave on 172 kilohertz. 
Uh, of course, we cannot listen to that wave. It's far too high for the human ear. But of course, we can listen this. And that's a quite a good wave. And let's listen what happens when we uh, close this switch. Switch one. Now that resistor here is 3K3. It stops. That's strange. But let's uh, turn the potentiometer. Again, we have a very good waveform on 2.7, uh, sorry, 2.7 kilohertz. So uh, it makes sense to do experiments with this resistor. And furthermore, let's do let's uh, do this this switch. Nothing is visible. Turn the potentiometer. Perhaps something will happen. No, nothing happens. I switch it back and go back to this frequency. So it's a very, say, versatile circuit with which you can get all kinds of frequencies, all kinds of waveforms apart from that strange uh, phase effect but anyway you can also use that uh, phase effect to generate a perfect sine wave on a certain frequency with the help of this chip And over all the experimental results. So do some experiments. Uh, try to get the waveform that you want and need on a certain frequency between say uh, 1 hertz and even 200 kilohertz. That's all possible with this chip. So a very usable one.